everybody, welcome to the US Weather Plus Winter Forecast number 4, which is one day late. I had a lot of time to deal with to do the graphics and I only did them by today. So that's why the winter forecast is coming out on November 1st, not October 31st. And there are some changes from the last winter forecast which came out in the beginning of October. So we're gonna look mainly at these changes. And by the way, I'm sorry I forgot to put the key on this graphic here. For somehow, I thought I put it, but it looks like I didn't. But I'm still gonna explain what the colors mean. So we're still looking at areas of below average temperatures locate, located in the Midwest and also a new area in the Mid-South. Um, in fact, Apart from the area below average temperatures, which you probably saw on the last outlook stretching through the Midwest into the interior northeast, into, th into some of the lake effect snow areas like this area and this area here, we're also seeing another area of below average temperatures over here. And I'm going to explain what this means. So the blue, dark blue is well below average, and I'm going to explain soon what, why we have the below average temperatures over here. Like for Kansas and Oklahoma and Arkansas and Missouri, and the, and the temperature departure from normal is actually going to be less north of this. But this doesn't mean that South Dakota will be, for example, um, warmer than Oklahoma. This just means that departure from average will be more, and that could actually mean that Oklahoma could still be warmer than South Dakota. But I'm still going to explain why the departure of average will be higher in these areas. We're still seeing an area of, of above average temperatures in the southwest because of a ridge over here. And we're also introducing a new area of above average temperatures, as far as I hate to say it, for the southeast for this winter. Um, I'm, st I'm still looking at the southeast ridge located just off the coast of the southeast coast and that means there will be about average temperatures for Florida, much of Florida, southern Georgia and southern South Carolina, maybe coastal North Carolina. And although the above average temperatures will not stretch up to areas like Delaware and New Jersey and New York, like the areas where snow lovers live, like these areas are average, but this still may cause some problems for the east coast snow lovers, because when there's a southeast ridge over here, a system coming in from the Gulf of Mexico can't really go up here and produce a nor'easter. Instead, it would go, well, okay, instead it would go like this. And this means that it's all rain for the East Coast and snow where you see the below average temperatures. So that's an, uh, some problems for the snow lovers and I'll, and I'll show the storm tracks later. Now, next, next graphic, the precipitation forecast. So the I still don't have a snowfall forecast that's going to be in the last winter forecast. But the precipitation forecast is changed a little bit. So first of all, I've narrowed down the below average precipitation area to just a little stripe along the Mexico border, Mexico, Mexico, Arizona, New Mexico border, where there still could be below average precipitation. Um, I'm, I'm now thinking this area will be average precipitation because there will be enough systems coming into this area to cause some rain. And I've also stretched the above average precipitation over here into Colorado. Uh, the there will be some systems coming up through this corridor and that's why we're seeing above average precipitation here along portions of the Gulf Coast mid-south into the southeast and areas just to the west of the Appalachian Mountains. And we're also going to be seeing systems coming in like here, like from this, and this means that there could be above average precipitation for these areas too, like from Canada border down to the Midwest, pretty much to the Appalachian Corridor where systems will weaken. And well, there will be some systems coming in from the Pacific Northwest, so I've still got this area of above average precipitation over here. 
like in the mountain west into central plains. Now, I've also introduced a new outlook now, which is the severe weather outlook for winter. And basically, this is the outlook where, about where I think there will be the best chance for severe weather activity during the winter. And the red area is where I think there will be the best chance of severe weather activity during the winter. And it will be for coastal Texas into for much of Louisiana, the whole state of Mississippi, eastern Arkansas, southwest Tennessee, and western Alabama. That's where I'm thinking there could be some severe weather because cold fronts will be like stretching like this and there could be some 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 instability during the winter here with the systems that come through the Palatian weathers, although it'll be just maybe just one or two severe weather events, there still could be some oh there still could be some threat. Another area I'm thinking about you know, for severe weather activity, although I haven't noted it here, would be possibly these areas like Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana. But I'm not entirely sure about that. It depends on how active the storm track will be and how strong the cold fronts will be. And I'll see if I'll introduce a severe weather area over here well in the final forecast. The last thing we're gonna look at will be the storm tracks outlook. And here it is. Now there are oops, there are some changes since the last outlook. So first there are, there will be I'm pushing up more storm tracks. I put up only three storm tracks last time, well now I'm putting up five. The most common storm tracks are in the red the more common storm tracks will be in the ye in the yellow, and the less common storm track will be in the green. So this this is the Alberta Clipper right here, and that's going to be a more com most common storm track. Another most common storm track will be the Pineapple Express, I believe. And both of these could be producing snow in these regions over here. Maybe maybe some slight snow in these regions too. And in, in this region. Now, um, the more contracts, well, this will be the Colorado Low over here. Th and this will be going up to the Great Lakes. This will be a rain producer for the east, and a snow producer for the Midwest over here. And also, snow producer for these regions here. And also, this will be a more common storm track. This is an Appalachian runner. And again, this will be a big rainstorm and possibly severe weather for these regions here, depending whether this track is a little more west, a little more east. And there will be snow, possibly very far south. Could be some snow, like over here, with this system, like Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, and Tennessee. There could be some snow with this, with this system, with this kind of system. And then there could be again, snow here in the Midwest, Ohio Valley, and the interior Northeast. A last common track will be the North e the Nor'easter. I don't think a lot of those will happen this winter. Maybe one can happen. Maybe one, at most two. And that means there's a huge snowstorm in the Northeast. And I'm not really thinking there will be a lot of these, but there could be one, at the most two. And, you know, and this might possibly bring snow to the southeast too, although I kind of doubt it, that there will be a lot, a big snowstorms in the southeast this year. Maybe just a bit of snow. Well, in the lower elevations. So that's about it for this video. If you want any moto graphics or additional information, you can, you can comment on the video below or in the post. But for the video, that's it. So thank you for watching. Have a good night and make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and don't miss our final winter forecast which will be on November 30th. Have a good night.